for NASA and our nation uh, moving outward into the solar system. And the next big step it will be the moon with uh, the Artemis missions. And I'd like to see us uh, go set up a similar type of proving ground on the moon. And that's the right next step for ultimately uh, landing humans on Mars, which is going to be uh, so exciting. I hope maybe we'll see that in my lifetime. I think we probably will. Uh, maybe sooner than some people think. Oh, that's so exciting. And I know that you've had really limited communication in the from the International Space Station. If there was one thing that you could tell your friends and family about your experience right now, what would that be? Oh, probably just how much I appreciate how they've shaped me and their influence on my trajectory. Um, you know, looking back, it, it all makes sense in hindsight, and I just see all the amazing contributions and people that believed in me when maybe even I didn't. And uh, I truly wouldn't be here without those uh, people supporting me. Now, earlier you had mentioned that, you know, you are looking forward to being back on Earth. And, and now you're talking about, you know, the, the gratitude and the appreciation of your friends and family and your support teams. And what is it that you miss most about life outside of the people? Showers. <laughs> ah, showers. Oh, goodness. Okay, so showering, showering in space is obviously, the, the relationship with water is obviously very different. Yeah, water is actually amazing up here. So what you realize, you know, on Earth, uh, water, sort of the, the way water behaves is dominated by its weight. But up here, everything's weightless. And so the way water behaves is dominated by the forces of surface tension. And so you can actually take a decent shower up here. We, uh, we use water and we could kind of um, cover ourselves in water and it just sticks to you. And then you'll get some soap going. You can get a good lather going. And then there's kind of a multi-stage process uh, toweling yourself off. Um, so it, it actually works amazingly well. Um, I, I somewhat joke, but I, I certainly do look forward to a, a good proper shower when I get back. But we actually managed to keep ourselves uh, surprisingly clean up here. Okay, so as a high-performance psychologist, you know I'm going to ask about the challenges that you've had emotionally and mentally. And so can we start with some of those challenges that you've experienced that were in that gap between what you prepared for and um, what is uniquely uh, your experience on the ISS? Well, you know, I think the biggest challenge we've had is actually one you may be, you may be aware of, and it's one that actually started before I arrived here. And that was a um, unexpected coolant leak on one of the Soyuz spacecrafts that is docked, um, or that was actually docked to the International Space Station. And that was my classmate and colleague and ISS crew member, Frank Rubio's uh, ride home, um, along with Sergey and Dima, our two Russian cosmonaut colleagues. And so uh, in the aftermath of that uh, unexpected coolant leak, um, we realized that those three guys would be uh, spending not six months up here as they had originally planned, but a full year. And so it's, um, and I'm up here with them right now. And I have to say, I've been so impressed with, uh, with all three of them and their, um, th just uh, their attitudes and their leadership in in dealing with that challenge. You know, I liken it to if you were running a marathon and someone came up to you at the 20 mile mark and said that you're actually running two and you need to keep going not to 26 miles, but to 52 miles. Um, it's just amazing the, you know, Frank's leadership when I arrived here and uh, just taking everything in stride and dealing with those challenges. I've been super impressed and learned so much from his reaction to that. So you're in tight quarters and relationships are at the center of this whole thing working. Do you have any insights around relationships in tight quarters and more specifically relationships where 
um, you, there might be tension in trying to solve something that's complicated. Well, first of all, I am so lucky to have such an amazing crew up here. My uh, crewmates uh, are just some of the most amazing people, and they're exactly the people that I would want to be on a long-duration space flight with. And so that's, that's uh, a real pleasure. To answer your question, I think we take a very sort of tactical approach to you know, the, the real challenges of being in tight quarters for a long duration, for six months. Um, we're very direct with one another. When things come up, we try to just address it right away in the moment. Um, we have a culture of debriefing. So when there's a chance to just debrief things or, or learn from something, we do that. And then, you know, we're lucky here on the space station that the crew has crew quarters. So I have my own, it's about the size of a telebooth, but I have, sorry, a telephone booth, but I have my own place that I can go to get just a little bit of peace and quiet. And uh, sometimes just even five minutes of just going and maybe just taking a few minutes to yourself is just so valued. Um, and, and that's one of the really nice sort of design features of the space station is that we do have a place we can go to get a little bit of privacy. Um, so we're not all kind of just crammed together for six months straight, which I think would just naturally be a little more challenging. Do you have a, um, an audio track on loop that you're enjoying right now or a song that you've been vibing with? We actually have we have some servers up here, and we have an amazing support team on the ground that uplinks uh, movies and um, songs and podcasts and a, a whole range of uh, media. And so my brother has actually been curating soundtracks for me and, and uplinking them every week. So I've been really enjoying that. Every week I get a new playlist from my brother to listen to. And the, the variety and just sort of not knowing what's coming the again going back to the unexpected um that's a really fun part of it too fun all right so um let's just quickly shift gears we're we've got two minutes left in this conversation and i've just i just need to understand how your sleep and work patterns have been affected by the you know very different rhythm of um, day and night cycles so how has the lack of day and night cycle affected your sleep and work patterns We actually um, were able to keep things surprisingly normal. So we operate the space station on GMT, Greenwich Mean Time, and we wake up around 6 a.m. GMT. We go to bed around 9 or 10 p.m. GMT. And so although we see 16 sunrises and sunsets every day, um, in here at night we turn the lights down and we've got some shutters that we close on the windows. So we're not, um, it gets dark on the space station at night. And then in the morning, we turn the lights on, we open the window shutters. I try to stick my head outside and get a little bit of sunlight if I can. Uh, but we just operate a normal 24 hour day night cycle up here. Woody, you look happy, you look fit. You look like you are an absolute, um, Peak, position, uh, peak performance in all assets of your life. I just want to say thank you for spending this time and what an honor to see you in the ISS and have this conversation with you. So thank you so much for including us. Michael, thank you so much. It's truly a pleasure and an honor to get to speak with you. I'm really uh, thrilled to get to be here, and it's, it's just always fun talking with you. So all the best, and this was really fun. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants from Finding Mastery Podcast. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.